I want to share with you some information about campus developments around amateur radio and their connection to public safety. A couple years ago, some faculty members and staff discovered they shared an interest in amateur radio. There were enough of us, about six, that we decided to form a special interest group to make the hobby more visible to campus. In the two plus years since, this group has grown to include students and it has caught the attention of other hobbyists in the county. If you're not familiar with amateur radio, you might have heard it called ham radio. Same thing. And hobbyists, or amateur radio operators, are sometimes called hams. Amateur radio is an activity where individuals use radio transmitters and receivers to send and receive information between one another. Just like regions of the radio spectrum are dedicated by the Federal Communication Commission, or FCC, for cellular phone communications, the FCC dedicates parts of the radio spectrum for use by amateur radio operators. The federal government protects this spectrum for amateur radio because the hobby generates international goodwill and is a source for innovation and discovery. To become a ham, a person first needs to pass one or more FCC licensing exams, but with that license in hand, an amateur radio operator can do a remarkable number of things. How many people have a ham license? In June 2023, there were about 750,000 Americans with a ham license. Wikipedia says that in 2004, there were 3 million hams worldwide, but that's a rough estimate. California has over 97,000 ham operators. This large number is attributed to the high-tech industry in the state. Sadly, the U.S. does not keep any demographic information on those who hold a ham license. Nobody knows the age, gender, and ethnic diversity distribution of the ham community, which is too bad. It is accepted, however, that the typical ham operator is, like me in this picture, old, male, and white. Taking a look at the local ham radio clubs, and there are many near us, one will see that there's truth to the stereotype, though some hams are working to change that. The CI Amateur Radio Special Interest Group aims to break that stereotype by creating a campus community of hams that reflects the diversity of the institution and its student body. There are a remarkable number of things that a person can do with an amateur radio license. They can add radio to their camping or boating routine to help coordinate with others in their party or to have a way to reach out for help in an emergency. They can provide communication support for public events like Wings Over Camarillo or the Autism Run on campus. The local amateur communication services, ACS for short, organizes public service opportunities like this for the public good and to help hams stay in practice with their gear should an emergency arise. Some hams are drawn to the hobby from a desire to be prepared in an emergency when the cell towers and internet go down. In Ventura County, the Sheriff's Disaster Response Plans explicitly includes ACS as a communication support organization. If a person likes inventing things or building things, there's a wealth of opportunity for that with radio. Building antennas from scratch or mounting antenna arrays or assembling radio systems or brewing up a new electronics device or creating software to process radio data are all things a ham can do with and for their hobby. And with the right radio and antenna, a ham can communicate around the globe with other hams. Many find great joy in meeting people this way. The same equipment and skill allows a ham to provide communication support to people in emergency situations, too. For example, local hams help people in Puerto Rico communicate with their loved ones after Hurricane Maria devastated the island in 2017. This slide has some pictures of our radio people at work. Counterclockwise from the left, Jeff, Kevin, and Mike are in our radio room on campus in Del Norte Hall, learning how to splice UHF connectors to the end of coaxial cable. Mike is watching a YouTube how-to video. In the bottom right, Kevin and a different Michael are at Fathomworks at the Port of Wainimi, machining components for a self-contained radio system that can easily be set up anywhere to allow an operator to get on the air. This will be used for demonstrations and for emergency response. In the top right, Michael and Kevin, still at Fathomworks, are talking about the design plans for the radio system. These are just one set of hands-on experiences that our interest group hopes to bring to CI students and employees. Our interest group also allows the campus to connect with the ham radio community in a way that advances public safety. Our radio room in Del Norte Hall will serve as an adjunct component to the Emer Emergency Operations Center, EOC for short, on campus in Ojai Hall. 
The county activates our EOC whenever there's a regional emergency that affects our area. For example, it was activated during the wildfires in 2013. When an EOC is activated, amateur radio operators from the ACS report to support radio communications. For the first time, our campus will have its own radio facilities to support the EOC, allowing faster and more efficient activation of the EOC. Because campus is surrounded by hills and mountains, it is very difficult for radio signals from campus to reach Oxnard, Ventura, and Thousand Oaks. Thanks to a recent grant from the ARDC and the donation from Fathomworks of a shipping container, that's going to change. The University Police Department has a radio repeater on the top of Water Tower Hill, which allows a police officer's radio signals to reach all corners of campus and the University Glen, though it's still a challenge to reach some parts of University Park. At present, the police department repeater is relatively exposed, vulnerable to vandalism and weather damage. Thanks to our grant, we're going to be able to put a shipping container on the top of Water Tower Hill that will house the police department's repeater system along with a new radio repeater system for amateur radio. The new amateur radio repeater will allow campus students and EOC operators to communicate with other amateurs in the county much more easily and reliably. We are working with campus offices to obtain all the proper permissions to place the shipping container late in the spring or sometime this summer. And the only way to get that container up there is ferrying it by helicopter. So it'll be in a, a, a sight to see when that happens. Keep your eyes open for an announcement. That's a short summary of how interest in amateur radio is growing on campus and why it matters. If you have questions about amateur radio, or if you know someone who wants to become involved, reach out to me, Jason Miller, in the math department. Thanks for your attention.